uh, Jordan up in the top. Jordan, how are you tonight? Okay, can you hear me now? I can, yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I thought the office was, I thought the road was closed, so I didn't come down, but it looks like you guys are braving it. There's a couple of us here, but uh, if you could stay home, I, I advise that probably. Um, we'll get going ahead. If anyone um, has anything to say, certainly just um, speak up or raise your hand. Uh, but we're going to get the meeting to, to um, started. Um, this is the uh, Monday, July 10th. It's the Moortown Select Board. Um, we're meeting both live and in Zoom. Again, we have Don, Callie, and Robin on Zoom. We have a couple of guests, Martin, our uh, road foreman, and we have Jordan Von Trapp as well. Um, so let's go ahead with general public comments um, and start there. Is there anyone for that? Uh, is this one we should ask you about our situation or is that a different time? So with your situation, we're meeting with Ron, um, within the next half an hour. I have a guest here, Misha Golfman. Um, it's gonna talk about the Vermont 100. Then we're gonna go into executive session with Ron, um, our attorney, talk about um, an agreement or that he and uh, your lawyer have put together. And then we'll come out of executive session and, and chat then. Or if you have something to say prior to that, I'm willing to, um, you know, listen right now if you have something to add to what we are going to do. Okay. I just was wondering, I couldn't get a hold of anybody for an answer. And then I finally, Peter got back to me. So they have the agreement. And um, I was just wondering about a timeline, basically. If, if the agreement looks good to you guys and you sign it, then what would be, would it be able to go to Karen tomorrow? Or I just would love right, that. So yeah, why don't why don't we um why don't you stay around until after our ex executive session to, and we'll have answers for you at that point, Jordan. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Well, yeah. What was that? Uh, well, I was gonna say she could you know zoom back in maybe in a you know half hour, 45 minutes or something. Yeah, you don't have to stay. I mean that's up to you, but um Anyways, but after we, we meet with our attorney, we'll have some more answers. Okay. Um, so, one thing. There's in the agreement, there's, I guess there's, I don't know if there's room for discussion on one of the, one of the conditions, um, I guess, if there's any room for negotiation on one of the conditions, let me know. I, I don't know. It's about the timeline of being able to use um, George, what is the best number to reach you at? Do we have that? So maybe if we're in executive session, we have a question or something for you, we could reach out that way. It's 802-595-2494. Do you get that, Sasha? 595-2494. It's not coming in very well here. Could you say it one more time? 2494. 2494. All right, very good. So let's go ahead. Martin, you've got some road updates, I'm sure, for us. Why don't you go ahead and uh, let us know what's going on? Um, yeah, things aren't going very well right now, um, at least for the uh, Brook area. Um, we've had, uh, since early this morning, uh, major flooding happening on Ward Brook, Herring Brook, and the River Road. Um, Rest of our roads are actually doing quite well. We have a few minor washouts, um, shoulder related, nothing um, terrible. Um, surprisingly, it is just isolated to the brook area. I honestly believe probably some beaver ponds let go um, someplace up the mountain and with it, brought the water up incredibly fast like literally feet in minutes um so our infrastructure was not able to handle that um debris everything else is being lodged in the culverts um missing numerous numerous culverts on ward brook uh not small ones either so 
trying to coordinate. Obviously, there's nothing we can do until the water recedes. Um, when that's going to be is, I guess, the big question mark right now. Um, I think it still has the potential to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. Um, okay. So we are, I've lined up some trucks, um, have standby equipment if, uh, if needed. Um, but we're really, I've stockpiled as much as I have room for in the pit right now. Um, both like a three and a half inch dense grade. Some of these um, erosion issues are literally four, six feet deep. It's uh, half of a road. It's, uh, it's, a, it's basically a disaster. It's uh, going to be a complete reconstruction of Ward Brook at least. Um, landslide on Herring Brook. Um, it's brought a whole slew of trees and debris into the road. Um, keep in mind, I have not even put eyes on this. I'm um, relying heavily on Sean pretty much. He was able to get home earlier today and has been out with the excavator doing what he can to clear debris out of the larger culverts and keeping an eye on stuff. But uh, with the forecast of continued rain through the night, um, I don't know as we'll be even able to work on it tomorrow until possibly afternoon. Um, so and then we'll obviously work diligently to get that done, but we're um, gonna be, on, I mean, it's, it's major, major reconstruction for Wardbrook at the least. Um, some class four roads have already reached out with disasters of theirs. Um, we'll basically triage it um, to get the most people affected, taken care of first. Um, part of that may include um, having to patch some of Berlin's roads to just get to our roads, depending on what they're finding for, you know, they've got to triage their roads as well. Um, so I'll keep you posted, but it's going to be a long couple of days, I think, for the road crew and um, everybody else. It's a kind of a feeling of hopelessness right now, just not being able to do much at all. So uh, surprisingly, um, I expected the phone to ring off the hook in the shop, and we've received very few phone calls. I think people are mostly understanding that there's not much we can do about it until the water recedes. Good. Well, uh, certainly, um, you know, a few things to think about when you're out there. Uh, safety first. Um, you know, make sure you and the guys just, I mean, that be at paramount. Uh, don't take any chances uh, to do any of this stuff. Um, the next thing you want to do is make sure we're documenting everything. Uh, even with Sean uh, over there doing some of his triage work, make sure he's taking the occasional picture as well. So we're getting all this uh, stuff recorded. So we, uh, I'm sure there'll be, in fact, I think the governor has already announced a state of emergency yeah. or a disaster and um, it will be ready to go. And we've learned last time that it's, it's paramount that we have documentation. Um, yes, we, we've, uh, we've, we've got some pretty extensive uh, photographs already. Sean's taken uh, the bulk of those since he's in the worst affected area. Um, Rodney's taken some. Stefan obviously stepped away today to put on his emergency management cap um, and taking care of that end. And I've got some pictures of what I was dealing with today, um, putting out small issues on the other roads. But at this time, most of our roads are doing okay. Cobb Hill's good. Uh, Lover Lane, Lover's Lane in Middlesex, uh, more town there is uh, flooding where Dubois fixed uh, a couple years ago with the ice jam. So that water has come in there and is undermining the cult, the uh, guardrail and potentially going to erode that section again. Um, hopefully not, but it's possible. Other than that, it's pretty much isolated to um, the brook area.
Well, uh, if there's anything you need from us, let us know. Um, but otherwise, you know, do what you need to do. And, you know, you've got your contractors lined up. Um, but just keep us appraised of what's going on and, and, you know, what you need from us. Okay, will do. Um, does anyone else have any comments for Martin? Uh, Callie or Don? No, just thank you, Martin, for what you do. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Robin, do you have anything to comment at all? I uh, know. I mean, I saw Sean up here with the excavator, and uh, he's trying to keep the roads clear. But as soon as he does, it seems they get clogged back up. So we're, we're we still can't get off the mountain, or probably not. Would wouldn't want to risk going off it. But you know, we're being patient. We're good. We Again, I think everyone um, learned from Irene and knows what you guys are uh, are up against. So. Again, thank you, and uh, just be safe out there. Will do. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Martin. All right, so we're going to um, move on. We have our guest, uh, Misha Golfman, uh, Vermont 100 Quarter Vision. Misha, the floor is yours. Thanks. Thank you for having me forward and more time. So I'm a new director of the Measure of the Path. And I've been at this uh, my new job for the past two months, and I'm new to the valley. And when I was, uh, uh, so about me, uh, for the past 28 years, I've been running school in Southwestern New Hampshire called Kroka Expeditions, which is a wilderness expedition school. Um, and me and my wife had started it and brought it to be a school that served about 1,000 kids a year of all different ages and semester long programs as well turning it to regular school, but also we have extensive summer camps there and work with many schools, including part of the union we worked with for many years. I have uh, one part of my job was guiding our Vermont semester programs travel for 60 years the lengths of the Catamount Trail from Massachusetts to Canadian border. So I have seen most of it 16 times and have passed through the valley many times on a long winter expedition, having a very different view of the valley, not from the road, but from up high. <clears throat> and uh, we retired from our work and decided to move here as I was looking for applying myself to a project that was, with, it was tangible and used in, for public good. <clears throat> My wife, Lynn, is currently working at LaRoe Farms. So when I was looking at this job <clears throat> and I was researching Medivere Path, I learned that for Medivere Path, as you know, his mission of building a continuous trail in the valley floor from Warren to Moortown. And it's been added for the past 30 years and hasn't completed. And when I looked at it carefully, I said to the board, well, just by bringing new executive director, it's not likely that you will be able to overcome the barriers, the historical barriers and not a very difficult barriers to overcome, but I have an idea for you. If you like it, then maybe I'll come here and we'll give it a try. <clears throat> and what I propose is that today, if we look at the needs, pressing needs in front of us, in, including climate change, uh, and maybe a walking trail along the river is not as important, but an alternative transportation corridor a long group on hungry could help in so many more ways. <clears throat> and I propose that we be aligned organization to change the goal. And so I'm here to tell you about this idea because uh, uh, this couldn't happen without your town being on board, obviously, because it only will happen if the whole valley comes together and everyone believes that that's truly important. <clears throat> but we imagine a ADA accessible path, which means that it's 10 foot wide, separate from the roadway, means that it's separated by, say, 
four five foot grass feet spread or like wise inside, depending on the situation. Um, and it's ADA accessible, meaning it's paid, and any kind of bicycle can roll over. It doesn't have to be a mountain bike, it can be anyone's bike, children's tricycle, a wheelchair can roll over. You can push the carrier to the child. An elderly person can take their electrical bike, which is up and coming, and go shopping in Waitsfield easily from that. So we have a vision for coming. It's truly for everybody. It's not just for recreational purposes, but it's really truly be for a transportation alternative transportation for them. And unlike unlike a uh, path that winds its way through many many private properties along the river, where one person can pretty much stop the whole progress for a long period of time, working with a group on hundred right away presents different set of challenges. <clears throat> but those challenges could be scoped through a scoping study, uh, which could be done through a grant with the Department of Transportation. So what I'm asking you in this meeting, I'm asking you to think about the concept. And if you can, as a town, line up behind the concept, I will, and if all other towns will, and I already <laughs> Been to Faston and to Waitsfield and going tomorrow to Warren, then we will apply for the scoping study. In a year from now, if we get a grant, we will learn what the challenges are and we'll be talking about it less as a concept but more as a possibility that clearly will take many years to complete. So that's my story. Thank you for listening. And I wonder if you have questions for me. Well, um, not right off the top of my head, but to let you know, we, we do have a, a safety committee in town that is that works on um, transportation issues. Um, so I think that that would be a, and John here is involved with that as well as Don. Um, and I think getting those guys maybe a little bit more information um, or if there is more information, um, that would be good. I mean, at the just as you, what you've told me, I certainly, I think is a good, would be a good idea. Uh, but, you know, I really haven't given it more than 10 seconds of thought either. Um, what do you think, John? Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. And it's, it's been interesting over the years, seeing how it's progressed. Um, and, but I think that now with this new concept, that's, I think that's wonderful. Um, so, yeah, if you have any other information. So this would, this, sorry, I did have a question. So this would be just on Route 100, so it would go from Waitsfield and then uh, up Route 100 towards Waterbury then? From, uh, no, from it will actually continue. It will not go towards Waterbury. It will go on 100 feet and terminate at Lava's Lane. It's a flooded Lava's Lane because the cross Renown Trail, the trail that goes from Burlington to Wells River, their strategic plan is to come through Lava's Lane. It's currently marked as cross Renown Trail. So there will be this Imagine coal statewide connectivity. That's a place where these two big corridors will connect. More so, the Bellomont Trail, which is the bike trail, the lakes of Vermont, will align with our path and will travel the, along the road. <clears throat> this will connect so many resources in the valley. This will connect so many existing trails already. It will allow people to go from one recreational resource to the other without needing to get on the road. And uh, upstream from here in Waitsville, you probably have heard of this big discussion of the conservation recreation visioning planning that they're all doing, the concern that people have with continuous development of new trails without having a big plan. This will actually address a lot of those questions because instead of building yet more corridor. We already have Long Trail. We have Catamount Trail. Instead of building another trail, it's going to be in order to develop Route 100 area. The path. 
<laughs> and the biggest thing for me, it's going to be for everyone, not just for, for all. Will this be something that um, ATVs can use? Um, ATVs won't be able to use it, but electrical bikes will. Okay. Um, Don, do you have any questions? This is something that seems like right up your alley. Uh, this would be lots of stuff to talk about. I think um, maybe if you want to come to one of our, uh, we in August, or we will be having another uh, meeting of what we are calling the um, pedestrians, bicycle, vehicle, advisory committee. That seems to be our new name. So that meeting is on August 15th uh, at uh, like 7.45 in the morning at Red Hen. Um, so we could chat then or you could get in touch with me and you know we could, uh, we could talk and I could convey some of that stuff to the, the group we've assembled for that. Great, I'll come to the meeting. Uh, my last question to you all, I know you have a big agenda. Other towns have asked me to also come in front of the Conservation Commission and Planning Commission. Would you like me to do that also in more towns so that all of your bodies, decision-making bodies are informed? I think the Planning Commission would be, would be good. We all have a conservation. Okay. But I would say it would be the rec committee as well. Yeah, probably the rec and the um, planning. And Sashi will help me with those contacts. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Very good. Well, thank you, Bishop, for, for coming. We appreciate your your expertise in this. So you said it would be paid? Like we like have it. even consider, you know, it's a it's easier to maintain the rather path and mm -hmm. less expensive. It's easier to wheel a wheelchair on a baby. Right. So you have to really think, but because federal, we would have to be made the federal appropriation to build this. Right. We will not have a whole lot to say about this. I think they're going to tell us how okay. this can be done. Okay. Very good. So, thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. One last thing. One last thing. Can you leave your contact, um, Nisha, with Sasha so I can get it? Yes, Dr. Hill. Yeah. I look forward to meeting with your group. Thank you. Um, okay, there's no one here, or there's no one online for GH, uh, GHR salvage, is there? Okay, very good. All right, um, so why don't we go ahead now? Uh, we have Ron Shems, our attorney here. Um, and I would move that we go into executive session uh, to discuss um, a legal issue. John, could you give us so, that? So that would be uh, <clears throat> one VSA, section 313, number uh, A first, then number one. And it's uh, number one, we have already found that premature general public knowledge would place this public body at a substantial disadvantage. And so under that is F, confidential attorney-client communications made for the purpose of providing professional legal services to the body. So there's so John, you, second. All right, all in favor, vote aye. 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 Done. All right, and so this is executive session. Um, so I'm going to have to, Jettison Orca Media.